This is part 63 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing paging in an MVC application. Please watch part 62 before proceeding. We'll be working with the same example that we started in part 62. The first step is to install pagelist.mvc using the NuGet package manager. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Click on Tools, Library Package Manager, Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. Click on the Online tab and then search for Paged List. So notice that we have two packages here, pagedList.mvc and pagedList. PagedList.mvc is dependent on pagedList package, so when we install this pagedList.mvc, it will automatically install this pagedList package as well. So select pagedList.mvc, click Install and then select the project to which you want to add these packages to. In our case, we want them to add to MVC demo. Click OK. So this should add both the packages to our solution. Click Close. And if you expand References, notice that it has added um, references to pagedList.mvc and pagedList assemblies. All right, so that's the first tab. The second step is to modify the index action method within the home controller to support a paging. And there are two changes that we need to do. The first change is to introduce this page parameter. So this parameter is going to contain the number of the page that the end user wants to view. And notice that this parameter is of type nullable integer because when we navigate first time to the index view, there wouldn't be any page number. So there are chances that you know the page number can be null. That's the reason why we have chosen nullable integer as the data type for this parameter. Okay, so that's the first change. The second change is to actually return a paged list. And to return a paged list, notice that we are using to paged list function. Okay, so let's go ahead and make these changes to the controller action method. Now this paged this to page to list function is present in those namespaces page to list dot so let's go ahead and import those namespaces within our home controller so that's the first namespace and the second namespace is going to be page to list dot and here we have the index action method within the home controller the first change is to introduce that page parameter and this is going to be of type nullable integer right so that's the first change the second change is to return you know a paged list okay so let's go ahead and convert this list to a paged list and notice that this function is going to expect two parameters the per first parameter is going to be page number and keep in mind this page number can be null Okay, so if it is null, that means we are navigating to this page for the first time. And obviously, if that is null, then we want to display the first page. So I'm going to use null coalescing operator here. So if this page parameter has got a value of null, then use a value of 1. Otherwise, use whatever value that is present within this page parameter. So this is null coalescing operator. And the next parameter is the page size. Let's hard code the page size to be um, three. So there will be three rows per every page that is displayed. Okay, and let's go ahead and do the same modification in the else part as well. So here we have the list. Let's go ahead and convert that to a paged list. Okay, so these are the changes that we have to do the controller action method. Now, the final change is for the view itself. So within the view, first let's go ahead and use those two required namespaces. So let's go to index.cshtml. Using page list and the second one is page list.mvc. And, this, and the other change that we have to do is, look at this, at the moment, the model for this view is I enumerable of employee. But if you look at the index action method within the home controller, what are we actually returning to the view? We are returning a paged list. So the model has to be I paged list. So let's go ahead and use that. 
so the model is going to be i paged list. Now since we have changed the model from i enumerable to i paged list, we have to do a slight modification to this section of the code. So this is a section which displays these headings, name, gender, email, etc. So we have to modify that piece of code there. So the, otherwise what is going to happen, let's actually build the solution. Look at this, when I navigate to this view, it's going to throw an exception. Look at that. So here we need to change that. So instead of model.name, we have to do model.first.name. Okay, let's do the same modification. Okay, so let's save these changes and let's refresh this view now and see if that compilation error goes away. Okay, so we have the issue fixed. Now look at that. It's only displaying three rows. Okay, but then if you look at our table, there are seven rows. And remember, we have set the page size to three. That's why we have three rows here. Uh, but let's display the page control at the bottom of the view. And to do that, we are going to make use of this HTML helper um, dot paged list pager. Okay, so we give it the model object. And then we specify the function which is going to, you know, display that pager links for us. So we are passing, uh, you know, we are using that URL dot action hyperlink, and we want to navigate to the index action, okay? And then we are passing this anonymous type, you know, the page as the parameter. So let's actually look at this in action. So at the bottom of the view just after the table, we want to display pager control. So at HTML dot paged list pager. And the first parameter is going to be the model, the I paged list. And if you remember what's the model for our view, it's going to be I paged list of employee. So we have to pass that model to this function. And the next parameter is a function, okay, which is going to generate those page links for us. Okay, so that's going to be a page. So that will be the parameter in the URL. And then we are going to use, you know, URL dot action HTML helper. So using that, we can generate hyperlinks. So we are going to use URL dot action. And then the action that we want to navigate is the index action. And then we can specify the root values using anonymous type. So new. Okay, so I'm going to pass the page parameter to that. All right. So let's close this, save everything, and let's navigate to this view and see if we get page numbers as expected. So look at that. I can see three page numbers here. Now I can go to the second page, look at that, I can see the second set of employees there. I click on third page and I see the third set of employees. And I can come back, you know, to the first and second. All right, but then there is a slight problem here. Remember, we have implemented search functionality in part 62. Now let's say I want to search all male employees. Okay, so when I click search, look at that, I see two pages. There are actually four male employees. So if you look at this, we have four male employees. And the first three are displayed on this page. And then if I go to the second page, we'll have, look at that, what is happening? First of all, let me select gender and then type male click search. Okay, so it has given us the results correctly. There are four male employees and the first page it's displaying uh, three male employees. And on the second page, when I navigate to the second page, I should see the fourth male employee. But is that happening? No. We are losing that search that we have done previously. Okay, so to retain that search, what we have to do is, look at that. When we search for male employees, so that's the gender, select that. So within the URL, look at that, we have two query strings, search by gender and search is equal to male. Okay, now when I click on this page number two, pager link, look at what's gonna happen. I'm going to lose these values that are present within the URL and because of that, you know, it is going to display all the employees from the database. So basically, it's displaying the second set of three employees here. Okay, now somehow we have to remember that search 
um, you know basically the search by and search string that we had in the URL and the way to do that is basically using this anonymous type here so I want to use this anonymous type and specify a parameter called search by and the value of that so where am I going to get that value from that value look at this when we actually search now let's undo this change so now so when we navigate to the index view and then when we search for male employees Look at that. In the URL, we are going to have these two parameters. So, I mean, query string, search by, and search query string. So we need to retrieve them from the URL and pass it to this um, action helper method. Okay. So, what is the name of the parameter going to be? It's going to be search by. And where is the value going to come from? The value is going to come from the URL. So how to get the value of the query string from the URL? You can use the request object. So request dot query string and then you can specify the name of the query string so what is the name of the query string nothing but search by and similarly we need to get the search query string value so again we are going to use that here search and then the same idea request dot query string and then it's going to be search all right so with these change let's actually navigate let's search for male employee so we should get the same output and now look at this when I click on page number two look at that I remember the state and at the same time I only see that one male employee on the other hand if I don't enter anything and then click on search look at what's gonna happen I get all the employees and when I go to the second page I have the second set of three employees and on the final page this one employee so it's working as expected now let's say I search for an employee whose name starts with S and when I click search look at that I have only one employee whose name starts with S but then I don't need this pager control here because there's only one page so there's no point in displaying pager control but this pager control is being displayed always so how do I tell to this pager not to show up if there's just one page that's very simple to do so when this is the piece of code that is generating this pager control so here there is another parameter that we can pass to this paged list pager function so let's pass that let's do that in the second line so what's the third parameter you can pass an object page the list render options object so I'm going to pass that object here so new paged list render options object and then you can specify several settings here okay so for example I want to control the display of this object and when I set the display to only if needed then it will be displayed only when it's needed that is whenever we have more than one page okay so let's select that if needed save this let's go ahead and search once again now this should disappear okay look at that on the other hand if I don't enter anything click on search I get all you know seven employees so there are three pages okay now let's say I also want to display the current page uh, that is active and the total number of pages available let's say I want to display a message here um, you know you're viewing page one of three pages something like that so how do we do that again that's very easy to do using this paged list uh, render options object so there is another property that you can specify so here there are several properties display item slice and total and similarly display page count and current location so I want to set that to true so that's going to display the current page and the total number of pages that are available so when I click search here look at what's gonna happen it says page one of three so you're currently on page one of three When I click page three so I'm currently on page three of three and similarly let's say you know 
I want to show the total number of rows and the row and the set of rows that are we that we are looking at the moment. Again, that's very easy to do. There is another flag that we need to turn on. Um, display item slice and total. Set that to true. So there's a lot of customization that you can do this to do this page control. And to do that, you can use this page list render options object. So let's save that and let's refresh this once again. Look at that. I'm viewing page one of three, showing items one through three of seven. Similarly, if I go to the second page, we are viewing from four to six of seven. And I am on page two of three. So very useful page control. All right. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.